My name is Stella Edem Amalabi, and I am into women's accessories. The name of my business is Delmes Accessories. So I make um, hand make uh, women's accessories from beaded necklaces, earrings, bracelets, and then all manner of hair pieces as well. I've always been a, a fan of accessories growing up. I've loved accessories, earrings, necklaces. I just loved them. So I think somewhere in 2016, I was like, let me, let me go and learn how to make beaded necklaces. So that's how it started. And I didn't really start having a mind business. I just wanted to make them and wear. Then when I started, uh, some friends from my office started requesting that I make some for them. I was like, wow, then I could make a business out of this. So that's how I started. Then in 2019, 2020, I expanded to, that was with uh, necklaces and earrings and bracelets. I, then in 2020, I, I decided to make um, hair pieces as well for sale. Going to learn how to make the beads was my own money that I, start, I used and then the capital to actually start was my own money. So I self-funded my business. Our catchphrase is uh, best book your best book accessories. And um, what that means is that every piece is unique to the customer. Uh, it can be that I, I make something for someone and you see it and you want the same thing. I will not make the same thing for you. I'll make something, I'll add something to it that will make it unique to you. Because I believe that everybody is unique in their own way. No two people are the same. So I'll make something, I'll add something to it that will be unique to you. I'll change something about it. So you might... Go and take a look at the other person's own. Even though it's the same thing you chose for me to make for you, you'll find something different about it. Yes. And I also have um, something, I'll say consultation. When you choose something you want me to make for you, I'll ask for the outfit that you want to wear it with. And then I'll give you advice based on it. And I, I might say, let's change something about it. You might choose a color and I'll say, no, let's go with this color. I feel this color might be better. And sometimes I realize I help the customers a lot in, at the end of the day. They might think that this is what I wanted, but they ask me to do this. And then I end up liking that one more. It can be about the color combination or the design. It can be that your dress is too much and you want to do another accessory that is too much. I'll just ask you to tone down a bit with, with maybe the accessory. So I will go with the whole outlook at the end of the day. Yeah, so that's what makes my business stand out. If you are a startup, you know when you start a business, they tell you to register, register. It's not just about registering. Once you register, it's, you, you need to pay taxes. And for a startup, when you've not really started making profits, and then they bring in the issue of paying taxes. It's, it's a big deal for a startup. Yeah, so that's one of the challenges. And then funding, funding for your business. Sources of funding can be a huge challenge. So in Ghana, as a startup, you have to fund your own business. And if you want funding that will make the business go very far, you need some huge amounts of money. And getting that alone is, is a big deal. Like, it's a challenge getting funding for your business in Ghana. If you want to make, you want to do big projects, you can't use some small money. You need some huge money. And getting money in Ghana to do such things can be really challenging. And another thing, it's not only me. I've heard it from other uh, businesses is a lack of support from family and friends you start a business and every family or friend wants you to do things free for them 
Meanwhile, you are putting money into it. So at least, if you will not even pay for the full thing, pay for maybe the materials that you use. No, family, especially family members, they want things for free. I mean, you do necklaces. Why can't you just make some for me for free? <laughs> you know, it can be a challenge. Yeah. I want to add um, more branches, should I say, to the business. Um, I would want to add a clothing line because I'm good with my hands, yes. And I would want to get a, a bigger space to work in. Currently, I work from home, my porch at home. I want to get a bigger space where I could um, display my products and it would double as a training center because I want to train, especially the youth, those who come out of SHS or GHS who don't really have anything doing until they go to school or uh, don't have plans of furthering their education. I want to train uh, so that we could bridge the gap for, um, uh, for them and then to meet the uh, growing demand for fashion accessories in Ghana. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of uh, collaborations. I'm on a lot of WhatsApp uh, groups that have entrepreneurs on it, startups, people already have, who have arrived, should I say. Yeah, I'm currently in uh, Millionaire's Network Ghana. Um, we do a lot of um, conferences to train uh, millionaires. And sometimes we do heart fairs as well. So, yeah, so. I do a lot of collaborations. I think it's a really good platform uh, for promoting businesses, especially startups. For some of us who haven't really come into the limelight, something like this could really help. Yeah. So I think it's a really good initiative. I think. You guys should keep it up. When I started Delmes, my biggest challenge was pricing. Pricing my products it was a big challenge for me. First of all, people are thinking, you just started doing this, so you shouldn't charge that much. Now, and that's fine for someone who's starting that's okay. But after some years, when you realize that your pricing is not uh, meeting the quality of products that you bring out, and people still expect you to remain at that level, it's a big challenge. Where sometimes you mention uh, prices to people and, and they give you certain attitudes. They want you to remain as small as you were when you started. Meanwhile, you know the quality of your product. So at a point, I just decided that I'll do what's best for the business, knowing the kind of quality that I produce, you know. When I made that decision, it was, it was a big challenge because people will give you certain attitudes. They make you feel uh, you shouldn't be charging that much because you've not gotten to a certain level. But I just decided to do that for myself, for the business, because I knew the quality of things that I was producing. Yes, yeah, so I think that was the worst mistake I made. Pricing below the quality, because I wanted to maintain my customer base. I felt I'll lose a lot of customers if I increase my prices. But at a point, I just woke up and I realized, no, I know the quality that I produce, so I have to do what's best for the business, to maintain, um, to, to stay ashore, should I say, so that I don't kill the business. Yeah. I'll tell you to create a niche for yourself, carve a niche for yourself, know what you are good at, what is unique to you and stick to it. Don't be intimidated by people who have gone ahead of you, thinking like, when will I get to that standard? When will I get to that level? You know, 
do your best to brand yourself as well as you can. Don't be mediocre. I don't support mediocrity in any way. But at the same time, know who you are and stay in that niche as much as possible. And there's this advice I've started giving myself nowadays. I'm not in competition with anybody except the version of myself that I was yesterday. So I strive to be the best version of myself every day. I try to better myself every day as I go on. So I think that's what everyone should do.